see that we've got a baby dedication to take care of for the glory of God. I want Asher Moses to walk to the front. <laughs> Come on up the Moses family and the Brewer family and all these incredible family. Give this family a grand hand to the glory of God. And uh, of course, how old is Asher again? Three months old. Well, he looks like he's very proud of y'all. What do you think? Let <laughs> I me mean, see this fine young man again. Yeah. 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 Incredible today, right here. Once we made it, amen. Y'all, would you say, Amen? Asher, you fall asleep, I can do it. Everybody else, you have to fall out, right? And, uh, but we're coming to you today, our family, for this one main thing. We're going to talk about Asher's son, but not much. And this is more for us because we want to make sure that when we live our lives and give glory to God, we want to make sure that when Asher sees this grandpa and this grandpa and grandma and grandmas and great grandma and aunts and uncles and everything else, that he sees an incredible example of the glory of God. And that means we need y'all to pray for us, that we live right, that we live godly, that our attitudes are incredible. That when this young man sees, because here, here's the whole thing. We think, Asher, a lot of people think, Asher, that kids come to know Jesus Christ because of children's ministry, and it's good. And youth ministry, and it's good. But this young man will get a taste from God, not from kids' ministry, not from youth ministry, but from this ministry. Amen. Right? This right here. And so, Asher, my man, the word says, that you are wonderfully made, buddy. You are, man. And this great possibly looking at you too. That you are you are made in the image of God, and you're absolutely incredible. And we thank the world of you. And we want to make sure that you know that. And I know I speak for this family, but actually we want to make sure that you grow up with great self-esteem, with incredible character. And I mean, he is looking me in the eye like a hog. Um, look at this boy. Yes, sir. Look at him. You're a beautiful man, Asher. Without a doubt. There are things you will accomplish that nobody else can accomplish for the glory of God. And there's no telling. And you got a little brother down here. You got a brother and a sister. And they think you're incredible, too. And we just want to pray for you in a great way. So I'm going to ask Grandpa T right here to pray for Asher for the glory of God. Here, Grandpa. Yeah, that's all I'm talking about. You pray for him. Dear God, we thank you, Father, that the Word says that you knit us in our mother's womb and that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you for each one that's here, Lord. I know that you have a plan for each of our lives. You have a plan for Asher's life. I pray that you bless him, Lord. Help him each save his life, Lord, that he might walk after you, Lord. Help us all also, Father, to walk after your steps, Lord, what you would have us to do. May our lives be pleasing in your sight, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Y'all see my water? <laughs> Dan, get a chance to get some water. God took care of this thing. Here's what's going on. I gotta start speaking now. I gotta be at another church at 1115 to speak again at a Baptist church. And so I'm going to do this right now. I'm in this sermon series, and I'm I, when I think I'm done, I'm not done. And so I'm going to do this for sermon again. I got one more that I'm done. It's with our culture. But this is with addictions. And I'm using this base verse, Romans 7, 
verse 15 and then verse 19 through 20. And here's the word. For what I am doing, I do not understand, for I am not practicing what I would like to do, but I'm doing the very thing that I hate. Now listen, is that a statement of addiction or what? That's not that's not, that's not, that's not it. Then he says, verse 19, For the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I'm doing the very thing that I do not want, I know I'm going to do it, but sin which dwells in me. And our definition for addiction is any behavior that you have difficulty controlling and that you continue to do despite of negative consequences. So when you hear addiction, what do you think? Drugs. You think about alcohol. That's the first thing you think about. Well, addiction is much more than that. Addiction is a whole realm of things. And so it's something that has control of me. I cannot break it. And yet everybody sees how it's messing me up, but I continue doing this negative thing. I am addicted to this behavior. Now what the world calls addiction, the Bible calls a stronghold. And as Addison always said, there are all types of addictions. Drugs, of course, come from a way off. Alcohol, Jack Daniel, all the stuff comes to our, our mind right off. But then, of course, there's being busy. I mean, being busy is an addiction. Amen. You never see in the Bible Jesus being busy. If you're one of those people, and I'm one of those people that says, I'm so busy, just notice when we say that, we're very unscriptural. Because you never see Jesus being busy, He had a purpose. But he was never running around, and I could prove that in Mark 1, but not this sermon. But that's an addiction, being busy. Also, of course, jealousy, porn, smoking, food, worry, social media. There's all types of addictions, so don't narrow or focus in with the blinders on just to do those two things, you know, alcohol and drugs. Addiction is much more than that. So we see in Romans 7 that Paul is struggling with something, and Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Two-thirds! Besides Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul influenced Christianity more than anybody else alive. And Paul says, I tell you, man, there's something in my life that I am addicted to, and I can't shake it. And it's just, it has me big time. In Romans 7, verse 17, he says, so now, no longer am I the one doing it, but sin that dwells in me. Well, that's a change. We live in a society where we don't want to call it sin. We say, well, I'm addicted, but it's a behavior. It's a disease. No, it's sin. Amen. Well, it's just a bad habit. Yeah, it's sin. Well, something I do over and over and over. It's in my genes. Whatever it is, you won't call it, but don't miss this. The Bible calls it sin. So you don't have an addiction problem. We, myself included, we have a sin problem. Correct? Amen. Correct. So, that's it. We all have issues in our lives that keeps us from being the best version of ourselves. Of course, I have already prayed for Asher. There is no telling what God wants Asher to do. There is no telling, and we know what God wants you to do. But what keeps you and me from being the best me, from being the best you that we can be? Is that we got stuff in our lives that keeps us from being the best version we can be, and that is that stuff. So if God, and God can, but we are, will allow God to break us from that, there's no telling what God can do. Uh, of course, I love doctors. Not a sermon. But I met another great doctor in town. I talked to him all the time. And we were talking this week, and he said, Charles, if I could get you well enough in every area of your life, then you live just one more year. I thought, he died. <laughs> he said, think what you could accomplish in one year. I flipped that. Think what you could accomplish in one year if you were at the best version of you. It's unbelievable what you could accomplish in one year. If you were at the best version of you. Lord, for what keeps me from being the best version of me? Me! My addictions! Verse 18, he says, For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is in my flesh. 
for the wound is present, but the doing, well, it's not present. I mean, Paul is saying, there's this part of me that's the, what we call the damning nature of theological term, the sinful man. I mean, it's like, there's the good Charles. Yeah. Then there's like, no. My name is Charles, but my staff knows me sometimes as Morals. Who is Morals? Morals is a jerk. <laughs> Morals is no good. And I will say, Morals is in the house. And when Morals is in the house, the house is good for nobody. Because Morals. Now, you have a side of you, don't you? That's a jerk. That's the side Paul's talking about. What's in me, I cannot control. I thought about not sharing this, but I thought, I've asked about 15 people in our church if I should share this story. It's a true story. It's not about me. It's about Francis of Assisi. Incredible patron faith of the Father. who did great for God's kingdom. But anyway, he talks about this stuff, this war going on in his life. And he says, St. Francis says, I want to break this habit, but my flesh says, no. I want to read the Bible, but the flesh says, you're too busy. I want to quit lusting, but the flesh says, check it out. I want to do right. I don't want to cuss that guy out, but the flesh says, let them have it. Are you with me? Do you know what St. Francis called his flesh? This part of him that he did not like. This is crazy. I can't believe I'm going to say this. He called his flesh brother He called his flesh a part of him where he didn't want to have rules like He said, Brother Ass. When Brother Ass shows up, it's really unbelievable. Are you in shock? Some of you are, are in more shock than I said the word ass. <laughs> then you are over your sinful, addictive behavior. Wow. Amazing, isn't it? I have this unbelief in my life, and I have this jealousy in my life, I have this in my life, but I'm more upset over that phrase than I am my own junk. That's how deceived we are. So St. Francis says, I got this part of me that really causes me trouble, and I want to break it. In fact, he says in verse 19, for the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I'm doing the very thing I do not want, I'm no longer doing it, but sin which was in me. I, 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 I. In fact, in those two verses, 19 and 20, personal pronouns is used eight times. In Romans chapter 7, verse 7 through uh, 25, the personal pronouns, according to your translation, is used 46 times. I, me, my, I cannot break it. I'm trying to do better. I'm so messed up. I, I, I. And see, what messes us up is us. Amen. Right? Us. Our biggest problem is not the person sitting beside you. It's not your boss. It's not even your dog or your cat. Your biggest problem is you. And if God somehow can get us off us, we can do incredible things for the glory of Almighty God. So we've got this dilemma, man. We've got this big problem in our life, and we've got to get set free by God's power. And we've got this, these issues. Um, we have all this stuff. When it comes to opioids, we've got a problem. When it comes to alcohol, food, cutting yourself, social media, this is an addiction. I've been taking this class at the community college and been talking to doctors and scientists have already proven, scientists in 2019 have already proven that people who are on social media a lot, that it has already rewired their brain. So your brain has been totally rewired. In other words, your brain is addicted to 
you're not addicted to drugs. And I know you're not addicted to uh, alcohol. But you're addicted. And the Bible says nothing in this life should master you. Amen. Nothing should. But you're addicted to social media. I mean, we got to see, how many likes do I have? And so now I'm basing my self-esteem, some to say that we're basing our self-esteem based on our, the social media stuff that we do. And if we have enough hits on this, and enough hits on this, and enough likes on this, well, then it makes me feel good about today. I feel so good. I put this tweet out, or put this out on Facebook, and I got so many likes. Ooh, I'm really so pretty. And if I don't get that, What's wrong with me? What's wrong? And I got to have, you're so addicted to social media that you got to have your phone and you take it to bed. You go eat and you have yourself and you have the person you're talking to. But wait a minute, as I'm talking to you, there's another person on, over here. Oh, hold on a minute. Who are they? Oh, I gotta have this. And then, God forbid that it breaks. Please pray for me. What the hell happened? My phone broke. What? You're kidding me. What am I going to do with my phone? I got to have a phone. I'm addicted to the social media. Oh, God. It's broke. God, please get me my phone back. Hey, I got to have a phone. Somebody have a phone. You don't see it, but you're so addicted to social media that your whole life is revolved around it. And we sit back in our self-righteous, pharisaical mood, and we say, how can they be addicted to food? How can they be addicted to drugs? How can they be addicted to alcohol? And you self-righteous devil, you, you're addicted to social media. Amen. Amen. You're addicted. Well, it's not killing you. It's not going to put you in the grave. But truth be known, it's your Lord. Now I'll land you down to sleep. Lord, I pray the iPhone I keep. <laughs> Where's this coming from? Matthew 7, it got speed up. This were the fourth straight week I picked this verse. You should know by now. They that cast out demons, right? Doing miracles. You come across this one case, a voice possessed by a demon. You can't cast it out. That's the story. Here we go. When they came to the crowd, a man came up to Jesus, falling on his knees before him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. For he's a lunatic and is very ill, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. I brought him to your disciples. We can't hear him. Jesus actually said, I mean, this phrase again amazes me. Meek, mild, lowly Jesus. My son's got a demon. I brought him to church. The kid to take care of him. What do you have? Jesus looks at the church and he says, you unbelieving, perverted generation. Wow. Happy birthday. You unbelieving, perverted generation. Unbelieving means this. I'm not connected to God enough. Perverted means this. I'm too connected to this world. And so the reason I don't see addictions being broken in my life, I don't see my life moving for God, is because I'm too addicted to the world and I'm not connected enough to God, right? Wouldn't you say, I'm just curious, wouldn't you say that the God of the universe, the God that made the world, the God that spoke the world into existence, there could be light and there were like, don't you think this morning that that God could break any addiction in your life? Well, my devil, that's a good question. Why does it, God, how many diets have we been on? And we're still on And how many times have you 
you said, God, I promise I'll never do this again. And you do it again. Jesus says, you unbelieving, perverted generation. Uh, it then says, and then in verse 18, he cast the demon at verse 19. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately, cry privately again. They were embarrassed. And said, why can we not drive it out? And he said to them, because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, it will move, nothing will be possible for you. But this kind does not come out by what? Prayer and fasting. So, what I gotta do, I'm not connected to God, right? And I'm too connected to this world. So God says, you want that broken your life? Prayer and fasting. So prayer does what? Connects me to God. Fasting disconnects me from the world. So at this church through November 20th, we are praying and fasting. And we're saying, dear God, we want to get connected to you. And whatever you're having a problem with, an addiction with, during that time, disconnect from that. I challenge you. And if your addiction is the phone, set your phone down for an hour. And don't look at it and seek God. Whatever, whatever your addiction is, leave that alone and say, God, during this time, I'm giving you my full attention. And God says, if you do that, I will do incredible things in your life. That is, if you want it. So, you got to get set free. And I'm going to show you what I think the first step is, the reason we're addicted, whatever the issue is. Uh, as they say to the alcoholic, this is crazy, to the person addicted to alcohol, to the person addicted to food, to the person addicted to porn, to the person addicted to whatever, alcohol's not the issue. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute, bro. I'm an alcoholic. Are you telling me alcohol's not the issue? Not only am I saying that, but alcohol's anonymous saying will say that. Alcohol's not the issue. Wait a minute, I'm addicted to food. Are you telling me food's not the issue? That's what I'm saying. Oh, wait a I'm addicted to drugs. That's not the issue? No. The first step of Alcoholics Anonymous is guess what? Fess up. What do you mean fess up? There's a reason you're drinking. There's a reason you're addicted to food. There's a reason you're addicted to drugs. So you may, this is how you get relief, but you can get drunk all you want. You can eat all you want. You can do social media all you want, but after that stuff is over, guess what? You're still addicted. Yeah. And you're doing that to get a relief, to get a release and peace in your mind from the addiction, but I'm still addicted. And as I said, denial is not a river in Egypt. So we got to get out of denial and say, here's why I'm addicted. Is it because of some pain in the past? And so maybe, I don't know, this happened to other people. I, it's like, I got raped when I was nine years old. And man, I still carry it. And so to cover the pain, I'm covering the bottle. To cover the pain, I would just spend a lot of money. To cover the pain, I went to eat a lot of food. And so when I do this addiction, I get a little release, but you know what? The star is still there, the pain is still there. So there is a reason why you are, why I am addicted to something. Right? Right. Yeah. So we got to address that issue. Well, here we go. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through verse 45. Check this verse out. Now we have an unclean spirit. Well, which is what? Then. Goes down the man. It passes through waters, places, seeking rest, does not find it. Then it says, I will return to my home. When you see the word home there, it's speaking of a person. The same thing is said in Luke chapter 11. That would be meant to me. The same thing. It returns to my home. So the demon has been cast out. He's removed from the person. And he leaves the person. Alright? Read on. From which I came. And when it comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. A 
That sounds good. Don't that sound good? I mean, really, if you walked in your house today and it was swept, everything put in order, glory to God. Everything was spotless, we're having a party. I mean, I think the men don't care. But I, I, I think every woman would say, glory to God. Jesus has delivered my house. Jesus. So looking at this verse, we think that sounds good. No, no, no. <laughs> That's bad. So guys, if you want to mess the house up, here's your verse. <laughs> oh, no, no. We know. Oh, here's what here's what happens. Let me, let me explain this. Stay with me. Whatever the addiction is. So let's say I'm addicted to whatever it is. Name your addiction. I'm addicted to it. And so people come to me, Charles, you've got to get help. Yeah. Charles, you're messing the whole family up. Charles, do you see what you're doing to yourself? And so you just keep on badgering me. Badgering me. Badgering me. And I'm going to say, would you please shut your mouth? I mean, if I hear you talk about my addiction one more time, I'm going to throw up all over you. Leave me alone. And they say, we'll leave you alone when you go get help. And then I say, to make you happy, here's what I'll do. I will check myself in the rehab. I will go to detox. I'll do it. And the family stands back and the family says, Hey, did you hear the news? Charles is going to be Charles is going to detox. Charles is getting ill. And the family stands back and they say, <laughs> Announcement tonight Charles is in rehab. Charles is in detox. Charles is in counseling. He's seen a psychiatrist. He's going to get better. And I'm gone a month, two months, three months, maybe six months. And out comes Charles. How are you, Charles? Right. Are you changed? Look at me. I've been trying now for this amount of time. I haven't done this for this amount of time. I haven't done this for this amount of time. I'm fine. And we say, that's good. And it's amazing. America is more addicted now than ever. More food oriented now more than ever. More social. More social. All the addiction places we have in America. So Charles gets out. Charles lives his life. And then guess what? Charles falls off the ride, off the wagon. How many times have you heard that story? Have you heard it at all? Have you ever wondered why? Well, not a good question. Why? This is first. Circumstances, but I didn't change from within. Look at the next verse. Verse 44, again, then it says, I will return to my what? House, which is what? What's that mean? Person from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. <coughs> then it goes and takes along with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. So this guy, first of all, had one problem, one demonic problem. Now he's got eight. And he goes and he lives there. And the last step of that man becomes worse than anybody was to begin with. See, you can change all the outward stuff you want to. But until you have a change from within, it doesn't work. You gotta put something in that life. And that's something you gotta put in your life. 
is the glory and the power of God. And until that gets in there, I don't care how many changes you make on the outside, it's the inside what's going to change. And I think we need changed hearts. If we have changed hearts, we'll change behavior. Most of us don't want to change lives. We just want to change situation. Well, listen, we don't want to change our lives, but we want to be skinny. Right? Bless God. That's what I want to do. It's a good day for me. Give me a whopper. Give me a fry. Well, change that. Mega fry. Big fry. Give me a turnover. Give me a cheeseburger. Fish filet. Uh, anything else? Diet Coke. <laughs> we don't want to change our diet. But we want to be saved. We don't want to work hard. But we want a lot of money. We don't want to have to study. But we want to pass the class. See, we don't want to change our behavior. So if you don't change the behavior, you don't change what's going on inside. Augustine said it this way. Get this verse. It shouldn't happen on the river now. I'll say it twice so you can hear it. And I'll talk slow. Augustine said, Good works as they are called, and sinners are nothing but splendid sin. <laughs> Good works as they are called, and sinners are nothing but splendid sin. Mere religion won't change you. Mere information won't change you. Amen. Mere seminars won't change you. Amen. Mere, mere anything, mere anything <coughs> that will change you, you must have a rebirth from within. And when you have a rebirth from within, you have reform without. But that's on the outside. So, I've got a few minutes. If I'm late there, they're Baptist. They won't remember it. I don't know if won't save God the same size. <laughs> Let me tell you about us again. From last week, from last week, we are trichotomy. We're body, soul, spirit. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. We're the only one in God's creation with all three. A tree only has what? A body. Grass only has what? A, body, a, a, a blade of grass, blades of grass. They don't have a soul. They don't have a spirit. When I cut the grass, the grass doesn't say, Oh, that's hurting me. <laughs> oh, how can you do that to me? <laughs> quit, 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 quit. No. The grass doesn't feel it. All the grass has is they do not have a soul, they do not have a spirit. Now, this is too complicated. Let me know, and I'll be able to see Soul. Animals have souls. Is that so, Jesus? Dogs have souls, cats have souls, horses have souls. I have a soul. Tree doesn't have a soul. But I don't have a soul. All dogs go to. I don't know about cats. <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, now, a soul, we say this, I'm ready to move. Uh, a soul is comprised of, right here. Your mind, your will, your emotions. So that's where your soul is. Uh, do you know why people don't change? Remind me to come back to this. Remind me to come back to uh, soul ties. Just remind me. I want something else. Do you know why people don't change? You know, I'm sorry to do it again. I'm sorry to do it again. You know what I'm saying? I'll never get drunk again. I'll never have three barrel sets again. The Bible calls said in Corinthians, worldly sorrow. Worldly sorrow is sorrow that involves one or two of these things. But when all three are involved, you have change. 
the prodigal son came to his what? Senses. When all three get involved, you have changed. That's why when it comes to the addicted person, you must have all three things involved. And when all three things are involved, you change. How do you get that? That's a secret in it. Oh, let's do prayer and I'll show you how. Now, back on this. Sometimes. Uh, we have sometimes. There are emotional sometimes. There's also uh, sexual sometimes. sometimes. Uh, when you, whenever you have sex with somebody. Scripturally, it's in Corinthians. Sometimes. Or there. What happens when you put chewing gum in a carpet? <laughs> we got a problem, don't we? You can dig that out all you want to. That stuff's still in that carpet. I'm going to get I'm going to get A man shall cleave. Cleave. Whoa. A man shall cleave <laughs> unto his wife. That means sometimes. That's the show. Tops. said Moses. That's his favorite song. Bad boys, bad boys. How old is Three, two, three. How old is he, Carter? Three. Okay. <laughs> He's walking around with bad boys, bad boys. Let's change the song. Change the song. Well, you, you, you see this TV show. The woman calls the cop. And the woman has been beat black and blue by her husband or her boyfriend, and she's bleeding in her ear, and she says, now the woman won. She calls the cop, the cop shows up, puts the man in cuffs, and the woman says, don't do that! He just beat the crap out of you. But I love him. What is that? That's so nice. That's why in counseling with marriage couples, they'll have the troubles and I'll ask them. I'll do this with everybody, of course. There'll be more sometimes. Folks, in your marriage, you can be married to Steve if you're thinking about Bob. We don't break down. The Bible is an amazing book, isn't it? Yes, it is. It really is. Everything we go through in life is covered in, in, in this Bible. And so, here's my whole point. Your body, your soul, and your spirit, your spirit. That connects me to God. Now here's the question. Boom! Here's the question. Which one of these three control you today? You say, Charles, I'm controlled by the Spirit of God. I hope you are. If you're overweight, what controls you? Help me! Fine. You say all you want, Spirit of God. Your body controls you. Is there a verse for this? Duh. <laughs> Duh. Uh. Adam and Eve, this to this, lost their dominion over the world. Right? This is the point. Adam and Eve were given dominion over the world. And they lost it. Do you know why they lost it? Because they listened to their fleshly desires. Whoa. I don't know what I'm doing. My name is Charles. I'm the speaker. I got it. Genesis 2, verse 6. Listen. When Eve saw that the tree was good for food. What saw? What, what, what is that saw? That body? Yes! Five, the five senses. Saw. And delight to the eyes. 
and they lost their dominion over the world because they did what their body wanted. I'm telling you, whatever one controls you, rules you. Most of us are not ruled by the Spirit of God. Are y'all with me? Well, I gotta go. We got about 80 more minutes. I'm not gonna do it. It's okay. We're closing. So Charles, how do I get free from this bondage? I'm skipping some stuff, but it's, it, it, it's okay. It's okay. Man, stay with me. Body, soul, spirit. On Sunday morning, which one, when I say Sunday morning, when you go to a church service, which one do we try to get hold of? Do we try to get hold of the body, the soul, or the spirit? The spirit. Do we do it? You're saying you're crazy. Probably. The reason we don't attack the spirit, we don't know how to. But that's where change happens. I can see I got your attention. Let me elaborate. Any church service, anything you go to, it shouldn't be a church, but it is a church. The church, since we do not know how to walk in the realm of the spirit with power and victory, we resort to the body, the five senses. Taste, see, hear, all that, feel, and resort to that. How many times have you, have you looked at a church service and you said this? Man, that was incredible. Man, I sense the glory of God. I like that song. The service was great. The revival was great. The camp was great. And for a season of time, it's like a euphoria. Woo! But then after the days pass, you still got the same baggage in your life. How many of y'all have been in great services in your whole life and you leave and say, the song was great? Like, you know, here we go. Amazing Grace. Are we going to say Amazing Grace? Was that written in 1600? Okay. That was great once. Oh, let's do Open Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart. Oh, that's so old. Let's do some. Oh, let's do some river. That is a river. That's it. Let's do some of new. You see, the flesh likes new, new, new. You know why? Because the flesh has got to be satisfied to me. And so you do all this new stuff. And see, here's how the front of that. Now listen, there's nothing wrong with what I'm saying. So what I'm going to tell you, there's nothing wrong with it. So here's how the church does. We've got to, we got to influence you with aesthetics. We've got to make sure the lighting is right. We've got to make sure the video is right. We got to make sure uh, the smoke is right. We got to make sure the sounds are right. We got to make sure because we want to uh, attack the flesh, the flesh. And you leave and you say that was phenomenal. That was incredible. Glory to God. And guess what? I still got my addiction. Right? Are you with me? Are you still addicted? Do you know why? Because the church only knows how to get attacked to the body. Is this making sense? Yes. <laughs> Mommy! Boy can run. It's incredible. Why is it four point five? Four, four, eight. That's moving. Trust me. That's really incredible. I do like that. Eight point eight. <laughs> eight point eight. <laughs> there we go. Apostle Paul. Just 
know that. Romans chapter 7, verse 24. Thank you. This is, it. this is the same chapter where Paul says, the things I want to do, I don't do. The things I hate, I do. I, 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 me, my, blah, 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 blah. Paul says, wretched man that I am, you will set me free from this body of death. I've got this addiction in my life and I can't get set free. I think I've told you this. Paul's from Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus. Here's how they did capital punishment back then. You know, in America. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in, you know, in, in America, capital punishment is you elect a chair, lethal injection, and food to get. Not in Tarsus. In Tarsus, here's how they did capital punishment. Let's say, for some unknown reason, I get mad at you. You know what? You got more hurt than I. <laughs> I mean, this is like, <laughs> what's he going to do? I mean, he can't hit me. I'm a preacher. <laughs> buddy, 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 buddy. And so, uh, for some owners, because he has more hair, I kill him. background. That's why when you study the Bible, you need to know the cultural background of what you're reading. Yes. Don't do sloppy study. Yes. Sloppy study. Sloppy people get messed up. Yes. Do right study. So in Tarsus, I kill my man right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so in Tarsus, here's how they do the death penalty. They have proven that I killed Christ. So here's how they did. This is what Paul said, wretched man that I am. They would take the body of this dead man named Christ. And they would put him out back to his back in the arm. And they tied it in the arm. And they tied it. And they tied my leg. And they tied my leg. And I'm tied to a dead man. They would then drive me out of town. They grabs me.
the only one that can do this is the Holy Spirit of God. That's when you finally come to your senses, myself included, we say, I can't do it. <coughs> right? Did you save yourself? Did you? No. Who saved you? Jesus. Then why are you trying to set this stuff out of your life by yourself? You can't do it. God can. Let's all stay.